I have the whole weekend. Is your new binge watch? Yeah. One episode. The video she made last night. Oh. <laughs> 23 hours, 55 sleeps. It'll be interesting to hear what was said before I got here. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> 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 All right. James had to stop and think real hard. <laughs> All right. You just didn't think you were going to be here because you were sick. Because you were running late. Um. Within a country, so within the borders. I think we had beat this horse to death yesterday, yes? Okay. So, in a given period of time, GDP could be measured monthly. It's too much work to do that. GDP is usually measured quarterly. And then um, comparisons are generally based quarter on quarter, meaning the first quarter of 2018 versus the first quarter of 2017, et cetera. And year by year are, are the statistics that you'll most commonly see. Yeah. If you have a GDP drop from 2.6 to 2.3, is that a lot? That's fairly significant, yes. Okay. I is. The remote's not working because it's not plugged in. Don't judge me, Robert. Okay. So GDP is total spending or total output. So there are four components. Consumption, which is C. Investment, which is I, government spending, which is G, and net exports, which is NX. This is the kind of thing that you would already have written down if you had read the chapter and taken notes. And we would be moving on to the next thing instead of sitting here wasting time waiting for you to write it down. Good job, Mr. Lampert, for having this conversation. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I should have my first moment, but I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Do you snow plug too? What? You should, you should snow plug. Shut up. Yeah, All right. Sure. GDP is Y. So the equation is y equals c plus i plus g plus nx. I believe we now, at this point, with the full definition and the equation and its components, have the makeups of a wonderful little quick GDP quiz on Monday. Rhiannon, thank you for getting into Canvas and checking it out yesterday. Um, One thing that I forgot to mention to you guys was that you can go to the Pages page, and in there is a page just for current events. It will give you all kinds of sources and resources to use in prepping for current events quizzes. Y equals C plus I plus G plus NX. NX is exports minus imports. Okay. Consumption is the total spending by households on goods and services. Bam. One of the biggest expenses that households have is for the house or shelter itself, whether that be a home or an apartment, an RV, van down by the river. Don't 
just start blindly copying what I reveal on the screen next. You need to actually listen to this more. You know. More. Not more. only you're not taking notes, but you're done. Rip. More. All right. <laughs> listen. If you are a renter, meaning you're renting a home month by month or yearly on lease, um, your spending on that counts in GDP. If you are a home owner or are buying your home by mortgage, your spending does not contribute to GDP. So renters contribute to GDP, owners do not. Put that down. The reason I explained it to you is because we do not have time for you to blindly and stupidly copy every word as it is written up here. You don't think in complete sentences, don't take notes in complete sentences. Rental spending counts for GDP, ownership spending does not. Yes. If you read what it says up here, for ownership spending, you figure out what it would cost to rent, and that counts towards the GDP. But it's not necessarily your actual mortgage payment or the purchase price of the house that counts. It's what the rental value would be. I will explain. If the house is purchased new, meaning it was a blank lot, and it's purchased new, that would be new production, and it would count towards GDP, right? But if we counted it towards GDP, then if we count the cost of living in it, isn't that also double counting? If I bought a house that was built in 1979, awfully specific, because I did, okay? That's already been counted in GDP, right? So I can't count the cost of living there now because that's double counting. So how do we fix this situation? We have to be very careful with it. We'll come back to it. Investment. Total spending on goods that will be used in the future to produce more goods. So investment is spending on capital goods. Capital with an A-L. Capital goods. This is spending on factory equipment. This is spending on um, a new snow plow. Um, when it says produce more goods, it should also probably say produce more goods or services. For a hairstylist, this is spending on a new pair of shears or clippers. This is spending on um, a new computer for a tax accountant. This is spending on um, a new camera for a filmmaker. on a new ice bath for a professional sports team. New stadium. Alright. It's also the office buildings and factories. And look at that last word on that line. Houses. Can you see why a house would be an investment rather than consumption? I'm getting some nods and some really blank stares. An investment keeps giving back. Consumption tends to be 
more short term, more one and done, not long lived. Okay. Um, the clothes you're wearing count as consumption because you probably won't be wearing them 10 years into the future. The house you move in counts as investments because it's going to be there a bit longer. Which would lead us to an off-topic debate about motorhomes or RVs in Tornado Alley, but separate issue. They would still count as investment. All right, inventories, and this is we're starting to make it harder here. Goods produced but not yet sold. So anything sitting on the shelves at Target is counted in investment. The minute Target puts it on the shelf, actually the minute whoever made it, the minute Keyboard made the cookies and put them on the shelf, they're counted in GDP as investment. When you buy them, they're counted in GDP as consumption. But have we double counted? Yeah, if when Keyboard made them two months ago and put them on their shelf in the warehouse, they were counted as investment, and then when you buy them today after school, because I've talked about them and now you're hungry for keyboard, now they're consumption. So we have to then subtract them from investment because today is January 4th, 2018, and it's going to be in a new given time period, right? So when you buy those cookies today, you've increased GDP in the first quarter of 2018. But because we know the cookies were made in November of 2017, you have thus decreased November 2017's GDP. Because it comes out of the investment for that quarter and is added to consumption in this quarter. Follow? This is kind of complex. That is why GDP numbers are being adjusted sometimes years to follow. Automobile sales. Think about that. Andrew? To the inventory? Yes. The value of the investment being reduced should equate, equate to the consumption being added. It's just shifting that GDP from one time period to another. Okay, so then does the inventory take into account like just the quantity or the like purchase price? Value, value, market value. So, but wouldn't by buying it you would increase it because no, no, because the market value is what it should be valued at when it's put on the shelf in investment. Okay. This is a big one, and it's a big misunderstanding by students. Investing is what you think of. Remember when we talked about how words mean one thing in your regular life and another thing in econ? Investing is not going down to Edward Jones or logging into your, uh, your TD Ameritrade account and buying some stocks or bonds. That's what you would do in your personal life, but that's actually finance. Investment for GDP is the capital goods. So could I, on this GDP quiz, ask you what are the three components of investment? I certainly could, and you would answer capital, equipment, structures, and inventories. Purchases, all spending by the government at all levels, state, local, federal, Department of Defense, everybody's spending. It excludes transfer payments. Have we talked about transfer payments before? Didn't think so. I'll let you get that down. 
or explain what transfer payments are. They're giving you examples of transfer payments. That is not a definition of a transfer payment. I'm going to give you the definition of a transfer payment. A transfer payment is when money changes hands without the other side of the transaction. What would the normal other side of a transaction be? A good or a service provided. Okay, A good or service provided. What you looking for? Your folding table? Is it oh, in there? Oh, in the studio. Oh, I got it. There's Thank a couple you. of them. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So money exchanges hands, and there's no good or service provided. How many of you got money for Christmas? Keep those hands up, because you're also going to be answering in the affirmative to this question. How many of you received a transfer payment for Christmas? Because one would assume that you weren't charging grandma for your love and affection. Right? That was not the service provided. You were just gifted with the money. Okay? Follow? Do you follow? Okay. So when you pay your little brother $5 a month to stay out of your room, that's not a transfer payment. You're receiving a service. Social security payments are transfer payments because social security recipients get that money for the government and what do they do in return for it? Nothing. The money is just being transferred to them. Okay? Unemployment insurance recipients. Yes, they have to prove that they are unemployed, but that is not a service they're providing. So they receive that money. Got it? Solid understanding transfer payments? It's going to be all over the AP exam in the second semester. Okay. Net exports. Exports minus imports. Foreign spending in the economy is what it represents. If we're talking about Canadian GDP, then net exports represents U.S. and British and Mexican spending in Canada's economy. We're talking about American GDP. We're talking about Mexican and Canadian and Chinese and Japanese and European spending in the American economy. Andrew? So when we purchase a shirt made in China, are we increasing China's GDP? Yes. When you would purchase a shirt made in China, you are increasing China's GDP. Is it possible for this figure to be negative? Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Now, most often we value or we look at trade country by country. And so we have a trade deficit with China. We purchase more from China than they do from us. But net exports looks at all the foreign trade together. Anybody have any idea where the, whether the U.S. is positive in this category or negative? We're positive. We sell a lot of farm stuff. It's not quantity. It's value. We're definitely negative. Look it up. Let's find out. What were our net exports in the fourth quarter of 2017? I don't know if that data is available yet, but you can look and see. They might have estimates. Negative. By uh, billions? Negative $543.14 billion. Yeah. Half a trillion. It was updated December 21st. Yeah. No, quarter four. Yeah, quarter four, all we would have is estimates. It's too soon yet because they're still moving stuff. 
The last time we were positive was 1975. <laughs> so, why is that? Why do we operate at a trade deficit? Meet the world. Ask to regulate our economy more than they do. We what? Regulate our economy more than they do. Maybe, maybe not. Or we don't have, we don't produce enough within our own country to support our people. So we have to import more. Because efficiency is still absolute yeah. advantage. Yeah. It's about absolute advantage. It's about regulations to a certain extent because that impacts absolute advantage. And it's about productive capacity. Um, is that bad? No. I'm not No, just trade is What if we were operating at a trade? surplus if we were exporting to the world. Could we turn that number around? Could we be exporting at a half a trillion dollar surplus? We'd have to get rid of all our regulations. It's hard to get our export customers. We'd have to get rid of regulations in order to restore absolute advantage because right now we don't <laughs> trade at an absolute advantage because it's just more expensive for us to produce things because we have the environmental and the health and safety standards and the minimum wage and um, full-time employment requirements with insurance and health care, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So if we operate from the, the fairly simplistic viewpoint that a number of Americans have that we ought to be exporting to the world more than we import, right? Thus bringing jobs back, right? bringing back factory jobs, okay? If we do that, what do we give up in order to get that trade advantage that we had in the 70s and the 50s? Why would we sacrifice quality of living to get that trade? Because we have less regulations on our things that we're going to produce now. We're going to have to reduce minimum wage so we can make this money. We also might have to increase hours work week, yeah. be more productive with the labor that we have. We'd have to sacrifice some safety regulations probably. People might lose more fingers at work. Huh? It's already happening with transport. Like Trump lowered all those coal mining regulations and now coal deaths are up 10%. Don't worry about it. No airline deaths in 2017. That was awesome. <laughs> we had any domestic airline deaths since 2014? Since that plane went down in the Everglades? Oh, no. Trump said he increased airline regulations and there are no deaths, so it's all him. It's 100% Donald Trump. That's why there are no deaths in 2017. <laughs> <laughs> so if we add up all the components of GDP, this is what we get. Same equation. Yes? So if we're so negative in the net export, but we have a positive GDP, does that mean that our C and I and our D have to be like extremely high? Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter if this NX is a negative number, as long as the Y is a positive number, it means our economy is growing. If we have so much consumer wealth that we can consume a half a billion dollars in excess of foreign goods beyond what we export to the world, what does that say about our standard of living? As a median level, that's a pretty fine standard of living. If we have so much investment that our GDP is positive, despite a half a trillion dollars excess imports, we're making plans to make more, right? We're doing all right. Where is the flaw in 
in our positive GDP. Do those capital goods be used to out of the country? So there might be like no, no, no. What's our budget deficit? If a lot of that C sorry, not a lot of C, if a lot of the G comes from borrowed money, debt eventually has to be paid back, right? Who in this equation is going to pay it back? The households that provide the C and the businesses that provide the I have to eventually fix the G. That's where our positive GDP in the short run is a long run fallacy. We have a significant problem. What? We don't have good GDP. Well, we aren't growing at gangbuster rates, but we are positive. Question, Dayton? No. All right. So you said we were at 553 billion negative. So we've been pretty stable. This is 2010. 550 billion. Pretty stable. We're not losing ground by leaps and bounds here. Pretty stable. Per capita. What's that mean? No. Comes from the Latin. Capit is your head. Per capita is per person. So decapitation. That's what he said. Oh, I thought it said house. Oh, I thought it said house. Us head, per head. Yeah, per person. Well, that's pretty good. Each individual, and here we're not talking about you, youngsters. Each adult is responsible for $33,000 worth of consumption. A year? In 2010. Yeah. Now, what that means is we all know people who are not capable of consuming at that level. So that means there are some folks who are consuming way above that. Remember, the rental value of your home. Go home and ask your folks what the mortgage payment is each month. Divide that betwixt the two of them. Multiply it by 12, and that's going to be a chunk of their C. Okay. Ask them what the rent payment is each month. Utilities, all that stuff. Mom, Dad, how much do you spend on groceries every month? It's pretty easy to get that number up there a bit. I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess that if you live in a home, your mortgage payment is around a thousand or more per month. If you're in an apartment in Papillion or La Vista, you're in the neighborhood of six to seven hundred or more a month, not counting utilities and all of that stuff. Okay? You're going to get a third of that in your housing expenses alone. Add food, add clothing, you're right up there. You've seen the doctor, okay? Took a vacation, it adds up. Buy a computer, an iPhone, a Samsung phone, a Motorola phone, you've contributed to this NX. TV, most appliances. All right, practice time. Oh. Yes. Yeah, Debbie spent two hundred dollars to buy her husband dinner at the finest restaurant in Boston. How much was GDP affected, and which of its components was affected? Hayden, was GDP affected? Yes. Positively or negatively? Also positively. By how much? $100. Hayden, 
What component? Consumption. Anyone want to disagree with either of them? Would it also decrease a previous GDP's yes. investment? Because they took the more goods that were used to produce the food. No. Sarah spent $1,800 on a new laptop to use in her publishing business. The laptop was built in China. Think. <clears throat> Show me with the thumb, GDP go up or down? Okay, what component? Oh, I'm hearing a word out there that might be a different component. Investment, net exports, investment goes up, net exports goes down. So what are you thinking happened to GDP? Jane spent $1,200 on a computer to use in her editing business. She got last year's model on sale for a great price from a, a local manufacturer. GDP up or down? Up. For this quarter, for this period. So Dayton says up for this period, Andrew says down for this period, I've got some neutral folks. What component? Uh, investment goes up for this period down, but then, no wait, yeah, investment would go down for the prior period. Yeah. Hmm. Kind of gets your mind reeling a little bit, doesn't it? Wouldn't the next one be, or wouldn't the previous uh, quarter GDP said that. decrease yeah. more? than what you increased it by because then it's on sale. Uh, so it's General Motors built $500 million worth of cars, and consumers bought $470 million worth of them. What happens to GDP? Just the other $40 million stays yeah, it's still an investment. How can GDP stay the same if you're putting things into components? If you're putting things into components, then GDP has to go up or down. Or is it offsetting? Just my hunch, consumers bought $470 million worth of them. When we say the word consumer, I immediately think consumption. Yes. So I'm thinking GDP had to go up by 470 million, right? And then investment would be 30 million, right? So where are you thinking GDP stays the same? I'm confused. Because we're just moving the, uh, we're the, moving 470 million from investments to consumption. That's what I thought it was. But you still. But if we're in the same period. It's not telling you the year dollars, changed. Or 500 million to that. So when they built them, yeah, it maybe went into investment. If it was still 470 million into investment, that's an increase of 470 million. But if it would have been in like a different year, would it? Have? Like C, yeah. Let's break these down. Oh. Nailed it. Woo! That was an easy yeah. one. It was an easy one. Okay. What we say on this one? We're divided. We were divided. Uh, Investment goes up by 1,800. Net exports down by 1,800. GDP stagnant. All right. This one got a little ugly.
to enter for the next slide to blow your minds for Monday. The return of real and nominal. Dun, dun, dun.